I just say thank everybody for, for joining us this morning. Um, for those of you that were expecting Nick Tankard, um, as uh, clients have to take priority and client, uh, Nick has been called away on a client visit this morning. Um, so apologies for that, but we have the very capable Fraser Thompson uh, standing in for uh, Nick's part of the presentation. So thanks to Fraser. Um, welcome everybody. Um, we've um, worked with customers now for um, one of the challenges we find in our, amongst our clients at the moment um, is giveaway and overfill in manufacturing, which is what prompts us to uh, schedule this today. So hopefully you find some uh, useful takeaways. Um, let's move on, Fraser. Okay, so uh, quick, uh, the agenda. So a bit of an introduction to SimLogic for those of you that don't know about us. Um, and then a discussion of some of the things we found um, on giveaway in manufacturing, uh, particularly amongst uh, the, the FMCG food and beverage market. Um, and moving on to then, what can you do about it? How can you uh, uh, tackle wastage on the shop, shop floor and thus reduce your production costs? Um, obviously mindful through all of that, that there are regulatory uh, compliance issues that we all need to um, adhere to. Um, so we don't want to increase stress in that area. Um, and then Fraser will give a, a short uh, demo of the types of giveaway solution that we offer here from SimLogic and some ideas of, of where to go from here if you want to progress this. Um, so say hopefully there's some useful content in there for you. Um, and the webinar is being recorded if you want to see it afterwards. Um, and it will be forwarded on to, to all participants. Um, just a quick bit of housekeeping. If you do want to submit a question, you'll see um, at the bottom or to the right of your Zoom window, depending on uh, your screen, there is a Q&A panel. Um, if you submit a question in there, we will pick it up and either answer it during the webinar if it's appropriate, or um, we will be able to answer, answer them at the end as many as possible. And if we don't get a chance to answer your query, we will follow up with you afterwards on that one. So without further ado, quick introduction to me. I'm the marketing manager here at SimLogic. Um, and one of the things we've been very much focused on is, is understanding our market sectors and identifying, understanding the challenges in those sectors and what serv services and solutions we have that, that can address those. So we're very much focused on um, recognizing the challenges of our clients and we're passionate about the technology and the solutions uh, that we can use to meet those business goals. and and ultimately focus on delivering real value to the organization. Uh, that's what um, keeps us focused all the time is, is really the, the apps business value to clients. Um, so we want our manufacturers in the UK and world, worldwide to become world-class with our Synlogic technology. So I'd like then to introduce Fraser, who is actually going to be doing the, the majority of this uh, webinar today. So you can introduce yourself, Fraser. Uh, thanks, Manali. Uh, right, so I'm uh, Fraser Thompson. I'm uh, one of the directors here with SimLogic. Um, as I, I've been working in this uh, arena now, which is called MES or MOM, or essentially just technology for, uh, for manufacturers, digital manufacturers these days for about the last kind of 12 years. Um, unfortunately, I'm a manufacturing geek. I'm the type of guy that will walk into the supermarket and pick things up off the shelf just to see where they're made. Um, if I'm just made an unfortunate habit I've picked up. Um, and I'll tell you, uh, Greg Wallace's TV grams. Um, but at least said about that, the better. So that's enough about me. Let's get on to kind of talking about kind of who who we are uh, as, as SimLogic. Uh, and essentially, as it says there, we, we're about providing kind of innovative, innovative, I don't even say the word, innovative digital technology. Uh, to manufacturing companies worldwide, there can be anything um, in the in the in the lines of kind of technology from data capture to human machine interfaces to dashboards and reporting to analytics, um, things that kind of sit within those space. Uh, and the general kind of problems that we get involved in in solving for our customers are things like uh, fulfilling customers' orders on time. Um, regulatory and quality compliance, which has particular uh, kind of interest for today's webinar session when we're looking at kind of giveaway, because one of the key areas, again, is that kind of regulatory compliance piece. Um, looking at managing, balancing workforce numbers and skills. Um, one, of the, one of the keys for me here is being able to make business decisions based on good data. 
you know, for far too long, I've seen manufacturing companies make decisions based on nothing but 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 gut feel and opinion. And whilst you have to use that occasionally, it's really good to kind of back that up by saying that the, the data backs this decision up. You know, we really need to invest in this piece of equipment, and here's the data to kind of show it. Uh, and again, in showing it is again making that information kind of visible to our customers. If you can make information visible throughout your manufacturing processes, you you can you can make improvements. You can improve what you can't see. Um, so that's one of the kind of key mantras that that, that we uh, that we have here at SimLogic. In terms of who we do it for, um, a wide number of customers uh, up there on the screen. Um, we have a range of different industries from kind of food and beverage to medical devices. So we've got lots of experience, lots of skills from different sectors that you can take from a pharmaceutical client, for example, and apply it to, to a food and beverage industry. But um, that's enough about us. Let's, let's, let's have a look a little bit of the, of the, of the challenge of, of giveaway. So when, first of all, let's, let's kind of define giveaway because uh, we call it multiple different things here. We call it giveaway, we call it overfill, we call it um, waste. We're, there, there's many different ways to do it. But essentially we're talking about um, if we're filling bottles with a liquid, for example, is the amount of liquid that we're essentially going to give away for free by overfilling. If our bottle says it should be 500 mils and we fill it to 503, we've essentially given away three mils in every bottle. Uh, and although the stat at the top of the screen there says um, for food manufacturers, again, this is widely seen across many manufacturer manufacturing types of verticals. I would say if you have a fast free flowing product that is filled, be it food, be it liquid, be it oil, whatever, then this is going to be uh, kind of applicable to you. Uh, and generally uh, the stat there at the top that roughly, 7% of UK food manufacturers adopt overfill uh, and the reason they adopt it is is it's sort of a peace of mind uh, and I guess there's also a trust in the in, in the equipment um, but there's perhaps also a little bit of misunderstanding that's that's tied away in there as well so we'll we'll cover that bit off a little bit later as well but um, there tends to be some confusion with the legislation as to whether it, it we still use minimum weight I think we haven't actually used minimum weight now since about 1979, which was before my time. Uh, so actually, the the current legislation is quite quite kind, quite lenient to manufacturers in terms of what you can do um, and what you what you have to do to comply. Uh, but in reality, there's always going to be you know some level of overfilling. But we want to kind we want to try and reduce it. You know, if we can reduce the amount of product that we're giving away, we're protecting our, our profits, our margins. Uh, so I would say from what we are seeing out there at the moment, the best case scenario, uh, if you've got brand new equipment that's been really well maintained, really well managed and processes that are finely tuned, you could be looking at about, you know, about 0.125% uh, overfill level. You know, that would be, we're doing, we're doing really well. Um, if you're talking about kind of world-class manufacturing being 85% OEE is one of the things they say, then we would say 0.125% overfill would be, would be kind of world-class levels. In reality, what we tend to see when we go out there uh, and we, and we find out what's going on is that 0.5 to 4% uh, of volume is typical. And that that's a challenge. Um, it's a challenge because controlling it, it it can be tricky. There's a lot there's a lot of things it says they're over and underfilling could be due to process variabilities. You know the the things that can impact our fill level, the product types, um, the packaging format, uh, the weight, the density, the accuracy and the efficiency of our of our measuring equipment, um, even down to kind of human error or you know I'll, maybe I look at a set of scales and I record to one decimal place, but I should be recording to two decimal places. Um, but the, the one thing to kind of keep your keep your mind focused there is that the potential cost savings from this can be thousands of pounds, if not millions of pounds, depending on uh, the, the kind of cost of the materials that you're you're putting into your product. Um, so again, if you're if you've got a 0.125% overfill on spring water, then you know the the potential savings are going to be kind of minimum. But if you've got a you know a four percent overfill on um, 
on, on a much higher value raw material, then uh, I think this is something that you seriously need to be uh, need to be considering. And the question we always ask our customers is, look, what's one percent? What's one percent worth? If you could get from four percent down to three percent, uh, what would that give you as a as a as a tangible business benefit? And one of the reasons we we really like this. Um, this solution to this this particular problem is it's it, it's really kind of tangible you can really kind of see the benefits almost instantly uh, from from implementing a system around this area so let's check the slides so how are we going to look at tackling this uh, this wastage well the first the first thing we need to do is you need to you need to kind of have a handle on your current data and there are a variety of different ways that people will will set out to record their current weight data. Uh, you'll have inline check weighers, for example, that be weighing every unit that goes past. There'll be offline bench scales where somebody is required to take X number of samples of the batch every half hour, every hour, every two hours, uh, and record them and write them down. Um, the first thing you need to do is understand firstly what's the accuracy of that, and make sure you can kind of get hold of it with that information you can then very quickly understand if you do have a an underfill or an overfill problem and and very quickly kind of quantify the amount that's been given away um and one of the main things there is we need to understand the law the the again the minimum weight is long gone um and i'll step you through the current legislation uh, in just a second uh, hopefully at the end of this session we'll, we'll kind of outline some of the technology that's available to help you capture the information and, and act on it. There's lots of things uh, that are certainly kind of hot topics like machine learning and AI that you can you can tag on to these days uh, and we'll go through how they can be used in this kind of application a little bit later on. So let's have a, a little bit of a look at the legislation. So. There, there's something in the current legislation they call the three the three packers rules that's that's enshrined into uk legislation and that's what essentially a uk manufacturer has to adhere to and there's there's three steps in there uh, some of which are quite simple to understand some 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 less so and they need some some kind of thought and they need talking through so, so firstly the actual contents of the packages should not be less on average than the nominal quantity with the nominal quantity being that the um, the measure that you that you define on your on your unit of sale. So again, if it's a 500 ml bottle, then 500 ml is your nominal quantity. So if you have a batch of 100 and you weigh every single unit within that batch, then the average weight or fill level should not be less than uh, that 500 mils and that's why we see that kind of 0.125 percent overfill being something that's kind of achievable you need to you need to maintain that at or just above that kind of fill level um, the second one is the one that takes a little a little bit more uh, thought around it so I'll, I'll, I'll read it out and then I'll try and explain it uh, a little so the proportion of packages which are short of the stated quantity by a defined amount which is the tolerable I can't say this is a a proper tongue twister the tolerable negative error or tne i'll refer to it as tne from now on because it's easiest to say uh, should be less than a specified level now for this one you have to get out the the legislation there's a little table in the legislation that says if you are filling to um, 300 mils for example then your tolerable negative error is nine mils so you need to do that little bit of a look up in there um, but what you need to be considering is, uh, I believe it's about 2.5% of your uh, products are, that, that, that's the maximum that are allowed to be at that T1 level um, for, for you still to be adhering to the legislation. So that's the one that we'll kind of, I'm going to do a little bit of a worked example on the next slide, which we'll try and take you to. Uh, and the last one, quite simple. Um, well, in my mind, it's quite simple. No package should be short by more than twice the the TNE or the tolerable negative error. So again, let's step that forward to a bit of a kind of a worked example here because we do see some confusion here. Um, if I have a, a bottle of liquid and this example, which uh, we're stating as a nominal quantity of 300 mils, then my TNE is nine mils. My T1 level comes into effect at nine mils less or, or 291 mils. 
and my T2 level comes into effect at 18 mils less or 282 mils less. So if you actually look at this picture here, what, what the conversation sometimes we, we, we have to have with our, with our customers is actually it doesn't become a T1 until it's in this band here between the T1 and T2 levels. A T1 is not something that is less than the, um, the nominal quantity to that T1 level. It's actually this band here from 291 to 282. So the legislation says that 2.5% can be within, within that band. And in order for a, a T2 to occur, it has to be less than the, the 282 mils. Now, obviously, ignore where I've drawn the lines. I've, I've, I've spaced them out just so I can make this kind of next bit a little bit um, easier to see. So what essentially you're, you're doing as a manufacturer, and this is the bit where I get, I get the pen out on the screen, um, and try to do a little sketch is what, what we'll see many manufacturers do is they'll say right we're trying to fill to 300 what we'll do is I'll set my fill level on my machine here at uh, ignore the straightness of the line at say 305 uh, and the machine itself will aim to kind of fill the bottles in and around that that band there and depending on the kind of capability of your process that will obviously impact what this um, this chart that for those that are familiar with with SPC like um, an expander chart uh, we'll see there on the screen frontier so you're trying to maintain here typically uh, oh there's a clarinet lesson started in the background you have to excuse the, <laughs> the noise if anyone can hear that um, so you're trying to maintain this fill level here uh, and typically above the 300 mils. Now what we want to do to try and reduce the giveaway um, is essentially if I can uh, delete that and start again with a new pen is bring that fill level down to this nominal quantity and keep the variation in your fill levels very, very, very small you want to try and hunt around that nominal quantity. So essentially what, what, that, what that is doing is bringing your fill level down from say 304 or 305 mils down to the, uh, the, the nominal quantity here. That's the aim. That's the objective of, of trying to reduce that giveaway. And that's where there's real kind of tangible benefits to be had. And again, as long as we adhere to the three packer rule um, that on average, we're not less than QN we don't have more than 2.5% of our items in the T1 boundary and we have no T2s, then we're, we're putting the ticks in all the kind of legislative bottles. So hopefully that little kind of sketch, uh, an example makes sense to everybody. Uh, and again, if you do have any questions as we kind of going through, pop them on the, uh, on the chat box and we'll, we'll aim to kind of answer at the end. So, just, just one question. Uh, thinking on that, Fraser, is, is yep. would it? How much could people actually sort of try and target even lower? So target sort of down nearer T one. Um, well, <laughs> you shouldn't. You should be trying to target your. Uh, <laughs> let's not forget the 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 first rule is that on average you need to be at or above your your nominal quantity. So you yeah. you need to maintain. If I get my pen out again. Um, you need to maintain this line here as your average. If yeah, the average yeah. of all your samples is less than that line, then you're you're failing the test. You need yeah. to you need to be on average in this zone up here. But again, to reduce your giveaway, you want to be hugging that line. You want to hug that line as as close as you possibly can. Uh, and that requires a couple of things. It requires trust in the process. You know, if if you have a, I get my eraser out again. One second delete that line if you have uh, a process that, that that sort of varies like this it's going to be very hard for you to bring that line down there because because you're already here you'll see you're having far too many occurrences in the t1 band and you risk putting something in the t2 band so you need to have that that trust in the process the the process capability um which we'll go on to a little bit later again if you're familiar with spc to control that process in and around the mean uh, in order to do that. Hopefully that answers that uh, that particular question. 
Um, the compliance is, is the big issue here. So the cost of non-compliance, it's a little bit like um, insurance to that extent. You know, if, if you do break uh, the legislation, then fines can be imposed. And I've picked two examples here um, off the internet, from uh, one from Lanchester Dairies, another one from, from Tesco's with regards to garlic bread. You know, not only have you got to withdraw the products, but you risk getting fines in there as well. And the implications of that can be very large. And that's one of the, the reasons why people do adopt overfill as a standard, as a standard way of working. You know, it's, it's perceived to be better than having the, the fine or the impact to your brand. And you know, that's the last thing you want. Um, but there needs to be, there needs to be a happy medium. We need to be able to control it, reduce the overfill and maintain that regulatory compliance at all time. And that's the thing, um, that we're trying to see. So again, not to not to try and mull on the, the kind of fine side, but that's, you know, if you do hit or break one of those uh, rules, the T2, the T1, or the QN rules and the three packer rules, then obviously that's, that's something you want to stay away from if at all possible. Um, in terms of kind of what's the upside from control on it, again, if just go back to that stat from the top of the, the top of the webinar 70 percent of food manufacturers are adopting this overfill how much waste is there in the manufacturing system if that if that is the case if you could reduce your overfill by by one percent what what does that mean to your business it, well, it can mean two things it, it's either going to mean a, a cost saving of raw materials or it's going to mean that actually you, you can you can produce more uh, finished goods for the same amount of raw materials, both of which have kind of real tangible benefits to your to your business. And again, if we look at the kind of real cost savings, I think we work on average of about 350 to 525k um, per plant when we're looking at 0.3% overfill. So I've, I've got a, a short worked example here to show you the kind of things that um, or the kind of the kind of tangible monetary benefits that can come from reducing your overfill. So uh, what I've taken here is a typical filling line, filling some kind of product into cans. Uh, this line runs about 1200 cans a minute. Um, and the chart shows potential savings from 0.1 to 0.5% of, of filled volume. Um, so on the chart, if you look at the, the bottom access, that's the bottom axis, sorry. Um, is a ingredient cost per liter. So if I take the example of, I've got an ingredient cost a liter at 18 pence, and I can get a 0.3% saving, um, then that would equate to on average 170,000 pounds a year uh, in product saving in this particular example. So again, it's it, if you could save that amount of money every year in your manufacturing process, imagine imagine what you could uh, what you could do with that. So we've put together a, a simple four-step process to help you get to the bottom of this particular problem if it's something you're experiencing within your industry. Um, uh, and we're currently doing uh, what we're calling a free uh, giveaway analysis report um, that will help us understand and help you understand what the, what the real business value can be. Uh, and the steps are as follows. So the first step is, is discovery step, is, is where we understand Firstly, your process, and you understand our methodology. Uh, secondly, we need to collect that data. Uh, we need to collect some fill weights, and ideally, um, we w we want to come and do that as an as an exercise. Um, one of the issues you can have if you're capturing fill weight data manually is is that kind of the element of human error. You know, things can be written down incorrectly. A sample that should have been taken at one o'clock might be taken at one fifteen. Um, if a bench scale um, read um, 502.3 grams, somebody could write that down as 503.2 grams, for example. And these are just things that, that kind of naturally happen. So ideally, we want to leverage technology to make sure that data is accurate. Uh, we then take that away. We run that through our software and we analyze uh, what's going on in your process. And we will compile a report, an insight report, that will show you actually this is this is what's happening in your process and this is how you might want to think about going away and, uh, and rectifying that so um, normally we charge around three thousand pounds for that but we're doing that as a, as a as a free analysis at the moment for for our value customers 
Can I just interrupt and maybe just do our run our poll now, Fraser, just to yes. understand what um, we've just if I'm just publishing a poll. It's basically uh, we've been uh, obviously we talk to a lot of a lot of companies in the industry and understand what they're doing. But I'm interested on the attendees here today. Um, what are you how seriously, I guess, is your company taking the um, the overfill issue? Is it something you particularly uh, concerned about? Is it on your sort of your, your board agenda, or is it something you you haven't perhaps uh, hasn't crossed your radar because you've you've just accepted it as this is a sort of a, a necessary uh, evil in manufacturing, if you like? So I'm I'm interested in, um, in what what your feedback might be on that as to um, what's happening out in the industry. I just yeah, just let that run. Yeah, I've just left a couple of minutes or two. So if you do want to take us up on this giveaway analysis report, again, I'll, yeah. uh, the link will be at the end of the uh, of the webinar. And um, when we send out the webinar to those that registered and attended, again, the link will be on there also. I'll just give you another second or two, and then we'll get there. Okay, and it looks like that's an interesting, it's, it's sort of semi, semi what I'd expect. We've actually, we've got an even, an even split between um, regularly do, it's, it's on the agenda and we're monitoring it and um, we, we haven't really thought about it. Uh, we, we accept it as a, sort of as, as a necessary uh, thing to do in, in order to comply. Um, and I think that's possibly what you've, you would see out in the industry in, in your discussions with, with clients, Fraser, would that be right? Yeah, that's 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 that's, that's fairly common. I'll, what I'll do is here, I'll I'll, I'll touch on uh, on how we go about kind of solving that that, that problem here with our uh, uh, with our kind of software that would monitor and track um, what's going on. So w what you can see here is I've got an example of a filling process which is relatively out of control and you can see that via the um, the process capabilities and, and performance index numbers down the left hand side here um, we've got a nominal weight for a product of, uh, of 500 I'll call it grams um, we've set the target fill weight of the machine to 512 and we can see here that we're running a mean of about 516.5 and we can see the variance in the process that's occurring here um, we've had no uh, T1 failures, we've had no T2 failures, so uh, you know everything's great from a compliance point of view, but uh, on average we're putting 17 more grams into every unit that we're that we're selling. So we have a process capability problem, and we also have a, a giveaway problem in in this particular example. Uh, what we would then do is using a, a, a range of kind of tools uh, from kind of Lean Six Sigma and SBC tools is look to bring um, the variation of the process, the voice of the process into control by, by using again some of these, these continuous improvement activities. We want to bring those um, process performance and capability metrics up to one and above. Um, so here you can see that um, we've not adjusted the target weight, we're still at 512. But by controlling the process, we've actually squeezed the mean down to about 511. We've really kind of pinched that line in and around uh, what's what, what's happening there. And again, we've still had no kind of T1s or T2s. So we've brought a process in control, but we're still set at a very high level. Now, uh, what's very unique about our software then is we're utilizing um, some machine learning algorithms, which we've pre-programmed to follow the legislation, but also use SPC tools um, to analyze and understand how we can go about changing and make modifications to our fill level. So once we've brought the, the system into, uh, into a relative amount of control, as you can see on the chart there, the software is going to automatically make recommendations to you to adjust your fill levels. Um, based on what's provided. So here we can see on a, on a user interface over here, um, it's recommending that we adjust our set point uh, down by about seven mils there. So again, if we were to take uh, our set point down from 512 to 505, the system is very confident based on the data that's captured um, and the rules that have been programmed that 
actually the fill level can be controlled at a target of 505 and not break any of the three packer rules that have been defined. So the instruction here to the operator would be to go and adjust the fill level on your machine and then and then see what's happening to the to the process again afterwards. So by dropping here we've dropped the target weight then down to 504. And by dropping it down to 504 and controlling and pinching that process, we've been able to manage the mean at about 504.2. So though we're still overfilling, uh, we've maintained regulatory compliance. We don't have any T1, T2 failures, uh, but we've managed to pinch that mean right down from what was, um, if I jump back, 517 to 504 so we've actually got a saving of about 13 grams per unit uh, on average from just following through that 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 fairly simple process uh, and the system is intelligent it will keep it will keep learning you know if if other variables come into the process that start to mean actually you know, the viscosity of the product has changed a little bit or the density has changed a little bit or actually the something's happened with the temperature that means that it's changed some of the the filling parameters that it will it will observe what's happening and it will make those recommendations and suggestions to you in, in real time to either stop the process or adjust the fill level volumes. So, um, <clears throat> so that's how we, how we go about um, kind of correcting that problem. Um, and I've got a couple of minutes left at the end there for, uh, for any questions that anyone might have. We've had, we had um, a couple of questions came in uh, during the session, which I didn't, didn't like to interrupt, but one of them was on the, um, uh, the stat you quoted, Fraser, on the 70% um, of um, food manufacturers um, adopting overfill. Is have you got any thoughts on why companies perhaps aren't ta haven't taken action before now? There does seem to be a huge percentage there that adopt overfill purposely. Um, I think you know they're, they're 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 few and far between, but there's certainly some um some of the people we speak to actually their their understanding of the legislation is, is out of date you know people will still be looking at that kind of minimum weight and thinking actually you know if i have one product that's below the minimum weight then i'm then i'm going to be breaking the legislation and we're going to get a fine and actually you know that's that that's not been the case now since about 1979 so so that that kind of understanding of the legislation is one uh, and the two is it, it it's it's kind of an invisible problem for a lot of people, you know, unless you're actively looking at the weights on a regular basis. Um, I, I was in a, um, a pet food plant re quite recently doing a, a shop floor walk with, uh, with the operations director and, and just so happened to walk past a check weigher and the check weigher was shown that the products were, were vastly overfilled, you know, and, and everybody was, was, was carrying on uh, with their daily business as if, as if that was normal because it was okay because it wasn't breaking any of the, uh, the, the rules, the legislation that it was perceived to be okay. But actually once the, once the ops director walked past and noticed that this was going on, then actions were, were, were put in place to try and reduce it. So it, this is part of the question about if it's, if it's not visible to you, if data and information is not visible to you, and it's obvious that you can take action on it, then, then unfortunately, as humans, we do kind of forget about it. Yeah. Just uh, align to that, how accurate are sort of inline check wires, typically? Uh, it, it depends, <laughs> is the answer. First, first thing to do is to kind of check your, uh, check the manufacturer's um, information sheets. You need to make sure that you have them uh, regularly, regular, voice is going today regularly <laughs> it's totally gone <laughs> need to get them checked regularly um <laughs> obviously that's one thing and also that what you're filling can can vary you know if you are filling liquids and you're using inline check wires then well, firstly there, there's going to be some error that's introduced there because the liquids can can move and wobble and there'll be something called the zone of indifference that you'll need to check um uh, that's gonna it's, it's really gonna vary by check where by manufacturer by industry so you need to check those I, I would say if you're filling liquids particularly then you need to you need to measure up any kind of inline checking with a with, with an amount of offline checking with with stable materials on a bench scale okay. and just uh, one question just just come in uh, from Mike is um do we talked about giveaway percentage right at the beginning do the percentages vary by industry is there a trend um, 
it, it's difficult to say. They, they definitely will vary by industry, um, and a lot of that has to do with not necessarily by industry, by the, but by the people that are that are in that that industry and how much focus they they kind of have on this, on control of it, and and some of that comes down to again the cost of materials. And again, if you if you've got a very low value raw material that that you're filling, that you know a four percent overfill level is not going to cost you too much and the focus is not going to be on it too much but if you know if you're if you're filling liquid gold then then you should you would like to think that that that, that um the manufacturers would be all over that monitoring it in in a lot more detail okay thanks for that i think that's Good. all the questions we've got for now excellent um if we want to um obviously i will um forward on the, the recording of this webinar to everybody on the, on the call today. Um, if you do have any further questions, want to discuss uh, product giveaway further, um, or um, say follow up on the, on the offer of the, the giveaway analysis that, that we've got at the minute, um, please do email us, Fraser, Nick, or myself, all our email addresses are up there and I'll leave that screen up for, for a little while. Um, and say we look, we Look forward to hearing from you. Always, always keen to discuss all things giveaway and overfill. Um, as Fraser said, that's what he likes to do is, is discuss all things manufacturing. So be pleased to hear from you. Thanks, Thank you.